Hello everyone. In this video I'm going to be talking more about enhancing your dream state. When you're starting to dream at night, a lot of us really don't reach the potential pertaining to what our dreams are attempting to tell us. Our dreams are an amazing tapestry. They're an amazing sanctuary where regardless of what we dream about, there is an entire universe of discovery. And that we really get into the dream state really unprepared. And that a lot of the subconscious aspects that we receive from the dream state, not only does it help to tell us more about ourselves, but it also helps us to reach new ground, to bring about new prolific abilities, new potentials that we actually have, and new possibilities relating to these potentials that we're actually able to acquire and feel in awoken life. So basically what you're going to do is you're going to create a dream outline or a dream map. And from this video, from what you see in this video, and from the very first night that you start to create your dream outline or your dream, your dream map, is that you're just going to start outlining a lot of the themes. Just kind of like you're creating a country or you're creating a world map that represents your dreams. You're basically creating the Middle Earth so to speak, when it comes to your own dream landscapes. So through this dream outline or dream map, whichever you prefer to call it, you're just going to, tonight, when you go to sleep, just going to start creating the particular theme of what this dream represents. It may be in a dream where you're feeling like you're lost inside a forest, or maybe you're traveling in outer space, or maybe you're on board a spacecraft, or maybe you're at a, family's, a family member's house, whatever it may be. But what you're going to do is you're just going to start over the next seven days starting to map out particular themes that you're exploring. Now, why is this important? Well, it's simply because you're mapping out your territory. You're creating this territory of where you feel a lot of the common ground that you're becoming familiar with uh, is located and what you're experiencing within those themes of dreams. And as you start to chart out this dream map, what you're going to do is you're going to start creating intentions through the commonality of this dream landscape. So again, if you're feeling that a lot of the common dreams uh, represent a family location, a location where family is present, maybe uh, feeling a lot of connections to like the North American continent, maybe you're traveling from city to city, maybe you're able to recognize a lot of these cities. Maybe you're even going beyond that and going into outer space. So you would take everything that represents the theme of outer space and you would make that a part of the map. The map itself doesn't have to be like physical land. It's basically just charting out a lot of these areas, just almost like a pie chart, so to speak, or uh, just a small grid to where you feel you are exploring your dreams over these next seven days. After the seven days, you're now going to start setting an intention to begin exploring in a lucid state more of these particular areas that exist within your landscape. As you start to do this, you're going to, again, depending upon the theme of the dream, be able to discover a kind of treasure hunting experience. You're basically going to be going on personal quests. And you're going to be able to start accessing information through specific elements contained within these dream locations, these dream themes. So again, if it's something in regards to your family home, that maybe you have a very strong familiarity, the landscape, the, the architecture of the home is exactly as you remember it. And what you're going to do is you're going to plan out a quest. You're actually going to go downstairs to your old room. You're going to go inside your dresser and you're going to go right to the bottom drawer because you remember as a kid that you were able to hide certain things that belong to you, that were very, very precious, valuable to you in the bottom drawer. And you're just going to make it your intention to go on these forms of explorations. Our dream state really holds a lot of significant potentialities for us to explore. But basically what happens is we create these barricades, we create these personal barriers where we interact so much in regards to what we're exploring in the dream and we really don't take enough time to really get to explore our environment with, together. The reason being is because we're dealing with so much drama. We're dealing with self-based barriers. 
And so it's really just being able that when you are doing the seven days of the dream mapping, that you're layering out the areas of what you feel your dream state is representing to you. As you do personal work and liberation, forgiveness, based upon those barriers, you're able to go back to these dream states and these specific areas, and you're able to explore more of those areas that you were not able to explore before, and you're actually able to retrieve potentialities, abilities, uh, communicating with other people that can really help to unlock other aspects of your brain, uh, and unlock aspects of your DNA, unlock aspects of your mind. So this is something that's kind of a, a very, very fun, uh, you know, exciting, thrilling type of experience that you can go into your dream plane. Now, a lot of lucid dreamers will do this, is they'll map out their entire dream plane, and they'll start exploring these territories. And after they have resolved a lot of the baggage that creates these barriers, now they're basically going into free access. And you can actually go into free access with a lot of these different other areas. And just starting to chart out some areas that you feel are very interested in exploring. So again, if it's going back to the example of your family home, going into your own bedroom and going into that bottom drawer of your dresser and being able to see a little box and being able to open that up and feeling this energy just coming through you, surging through you. Uh, this is exactly what I did when I first started to awaken. I would go into these meditative states and I would just basically create this kind of beautiful, you know, first person kind of maze. And I would open all these doors. I didn't know where anything was. I was just kind of exploring. And I would go through these doors in meditation. I would see these beautiful, bright orbs. And it just felt like when you're looking right at these orbs that you were seeing all this cosmic intelligence contained in these orbs. And I could feel myself picking these orbs up and retrieving this information and actually feeling it within the body. So you're doing that to a particular extent, but again, it just requires you doing mapping. So if you can map out your dream states and being able to resolve the barriers and just go on this kind of nice little treasure hunt, but also a little bit more than that, you're being able to explore the people within your reality to help you talk more about your subconscious, even getting to understand the projection of that individual and getting to understand more about their information. But you're also, again, creating enhancements. So this can be an enhancement of memory. This can be an enhancement for you to stop smoking. So how does that happen? If I'm going to, let's say if I was a, a chronic smoker, so to speak, how would I do that? How would I be able to learn how to stop smoking? Well, basically what I'm doing is I'm creating a trigger within the dream. And I'm basically, it's almost kind of like playing hide and seek with it. So let's go back to the family home example. If I'm a very, very chronic smoker and I want to learn how to give up smoking, and basically what I'm going to do is that I'm going to make it my mission, my intention, to go into the family house, to go downstairs into my bedroom, to go into that bottom drawer and to pull out a jewelry box. In that jewelry box, I'm going to, un I'm going to open up the lid and I'm going to pull out this symbol that could basically just, for example, be like a non-smoking sign. And I'm going to pull out that symbol and there's going to be some particular way that I'll create to actually embed this symbol into myself. Now, that may take the, the symbol of like a cracker or something and maybe have to eat it. Uh, that may just be something like a sticker where you can actually just peel it onto your shirt. And then that works as well too. So what you're doing is you're creating these missions. You're creating these intentions. You're creating these quests that can actually help you to profoundly uh, create massive ability within yourself. This will help to enhance your psychic ability this will help to, again, remove old patterns that you no longer want, such as smoking, drinking, whatever it may be, and being able to place these within your dream states. Now, one person may, may ask, well, Brad, I'm not very lucid in my dream state. How can I do this? If I'm mapping out my areas for seven days and I know some of the territories, I know some of the themes about what I'm exploring, but I don't feel I have any conscious control of the dream. I feel like I'm very much on autopilot. What can I do to become lucid? Well, this comes with a lot of awaken-based training, is that you're getting used to creating a subconscious trigger that you're constantly doing in the awoken world for you to gain a familiarity about how you're able to become lucid. Now, some people can just see themselves 
snapping their finger. Some people can see themselves clapping three or four times, whatever it may be. And that there's this subconscious trigger. It's basically a subliminal program that we're creating. Neuro-linguistic programming, subliminal programming, etc. And we're basically just getting the uh, rhythm, the pattern down of what this particular trigger will be in the awoken state. So that represents the idea of going into meditation. And maybe if, it, if your trigger is just a snap of a finger, you're just constantly seeing yourself doing this. And as you're seeing yourself snapping your fingers, you're just constantly seeing yourself lucid awakening, lucid dreaming, lucid awakening, vivid dreaming, vivid awakening, as you're starting to snap your fingers. So you're creating this subconscious program that as long as I keep snapping my fingers in this state of meditation, in this great state of focus, and I keep saying lucid dreaming, lucid awakening, vivid dreaming, vivid awakening, as I'm constantly doing that, you know, maybe about 10 to 15 minutes worth of that meditation per day for at least a good seven days. And then as that becomes so prominent within my mind, when I get back into the dream state, there's going to be a little minute opportunity for us to snap our fingers and actually, oh my God, I'm lucid now. Amazing. Now I can actually start going inside my family house. I can go down to my bedroom. I can go down to the bottom drawer. I can pull up that jewelry box. I can pull up that non-smoking symbol and I can eat it, whatever it is. And then being able to feel the effects of that coming into your reality. It's quite astonishing. I have done this in, dream, in uh, dreaming states and lucid dreaming states because my trigger is actually a snap of a finger and being able to be very lucid and being able to explore environments. It's quite fascinating. So again, sometimes they have just appeared as these brilliant orbs of light that I've continued to download and uh, just the knowledge continues to, to expand and become more and more broader. So this is again something really, really fun. Of course, nobody has to do this, but this is something that's really, really interesting, something really exciting that you can help to encourage to explore yourself a lot more. It gives you the further encouragement to self-explore. It gives you the further encouragement to resolve a lot of these barriers that are keeping you confined within your dream landscape. And so by creating this form of dream mapping, by going through these deeper guidances together in dreams and discovering these abilities that you have, the subconscious just works in such amazing ways. And that this is something that each and every single person can do. You just have to have a commitment level to it and that anybody can really become a lucid dreamer. <clears throat> yes, it's true that there's binaural beats or that you can use hemisync and that uh, bring your body to a state of complete sleep and keep your mind completely awake and you can certainly go into astral travel and that you become a lot more conscientious of that and you can create these particular forms of triggers or Easter eggs <laughs> might be a good way of putting it as well too. Creating these Easter eggs of potentials and of abilities for you to actually access within the dream plane by exploring the astral realms and actually being able to retrieve this. But always make sure it is for your highest, best nature, that everything that you're doing, you're planting these Easter eggs within your dream landscapes, let it be something that is of your highest benefit. Let it be, let it be something that you feel will bring forward a very high potential to yourself. You know, again, kicking habits that you no longer feel uh, are, are, are working for you. Smoking, drinking, smoking too much weed, I don't know, whatever it may be for you. But again, that's the whole point. Uh, now, for those of you who are, again, just still starting to understand the nature of your dreams, you know, you've heard about lucid dreaming, you know, you're really starting to get into a lot of the innovations of documenting your dreams and attempting to decrypt your dreams, but you're having a lot of trouble with that. Well, I'm very happy to announce that I have a new uh, service that's available on ConsciousMatrix.com. They are called Dream Interpretation Sessions. So I've been interpreting dreams now since 2009 and uh, just been getting better and better each and every day with them. So I'm very, very happy to offer this assistance for those who are still attempting to understand more about the meanings of their dreams and how they can create their own dream landscapes and how they can put these Easter eggs in their dream states and actually retrieve them by first getting through the boundaries, the barriers of self-limitation. Uh, and moving into those states of dreams. So it does start with the idea of listening, of understanding, of forgiving, of liberating. And once you're able to transcend that, you're able to start hunting for these loving Easter eggs that you would plant within your dream environment. So again, a lot to 
explore. And again, this is just us not being able to take our dream states uh, for granted and being able to actually take advantage of the power of the subconscious mind. You know, this is greater than any particular type of hypnosis that you may be going through. You're going on a dream-based adventure and you're having fun. At the same time, you're also harmonizing yourself. So it's basically having serious fun, you know, being playfully serious, so to speak. So if this is something that you would like to do, uh, I'm probably going to be doing another video on this in a little bit and uh, actually giving a demonstration of this dream mapping for something that you can do as well. But just uh, feel free to go at your own pace and create an outline and put these Easter eggs of potentials, of abilities within your dream environment. And just, first of all, map out your dream space for at least seven days and explore those areas. Be very, very familiar with the themes of what they represent and the barriers that you need to get past uh, through self-realization and self-liberation so that these areas now become open within your landscape so that you can put all the goodies in there, all the Easter eggs. So give this a try. If you do have any more questions relating to this video, please feel free to contact me, info at ConsciousMatrix.com. Thank you very much. Happy Easter egg hunting, and may it be well with you. Take care. Namaste.